what we're going to do is have a look at a simple workflow for Lightroom 4. That's taking the images from the camera, right through to enhancing, to exporting. If you work on creating your own workflow, you'll find that you'll be able to do this very quickly and easily within Lightroom 4. The first thing I need to do is I have my camera connected and I've simply turned it on. Lightroom 4 will now go through and identify that that camera is connected. Straight away, Lightroom identifies that the camera is connected and opens up the import module. So from here, it's identified up here that the source is my camera. I know automatically that I've used this before, so it's set up that I'm going to copy them as DNG files and that I shoot in my camera raw files. It's then going to take it across to the Lacey drive. I already know I have my handling set up and any, I can have a second copy already made from here, although I don't for this particular one. I've got a standard preview set. Any file naming I, I know is already set up the way that I want it to work. We can, I'm not going to change any uh, development changes to these images, we're going to bring them straight in. Metadata, we know we've got our basic copyright there. Keywords, this is where now I'm going to add some, add some keywords to these bulk images. Because I can see these images, they're all shot at the same time. I know that they're all shot at TAFE. Put a comma, shot at Tamworth. Another comma, their drawings. So I've got three keywords there straight away. So as many keywords as you can add to these images, that's what you do. From here, I know the destination is going to be straight down into my Lightroom training uh, section with, on my Lacey main drive. And then I simply come through and click import. And from here, Lightroom will now go through the process of importing those images on to Lightroom 4 and saving them onto my Lacey hard drive. So whilst it's doing that, I'm now getting ready to do the next bit. From here, I'm now going to go through and I want to flag and I want to star rate these images initially. I can always change the star rating later on, but I want to go through, at least flag what's good and flag what I want to reject. It's going to save me dealing with images I don't want anything to do with. So it's in there, it's loaded them. The beauty of this is these images at the moment, because they're the first ones in, if I come up to uh, the catalog here, I've got all my photographs, but current imports. If I click on that, they're the images that have come in. So they're in here, they're ready to go. So all I simply do is start on the first image. I'm gonna bring them up as full size so I can see a preview. And what I'm going to do is the first thing I'm gonna do is press P to pick it or X to reject it. So I want this, that's a P. And then I'm gonna star rate it. But before I star rating, which is one to five, hold the shift key down so I star rate and move on to the next image. So this is a three. Next image is there. I still want this one, although it's got a bit of shadow. I'm going to give it a 2. Because I hold that shift key down, I move on. don't want this image at all. The shadow is going to be awkward to work with, so I'm going to reject that with an X. And I'm still going to score it a 1, so once again, shift, 1, move on to the next. Definitely don't want this, X, uh, 1. Or you can just simply hold the shift key down when you press X and it will move on and not even, and, uh, not even give it a star rating for you. Uh, this image I don't mind, this is a 2, and shift and P, so it doesn't matter whether you have the shift key down for the pick or the star code, it's really up to you, and you can just simply go through these and keep moving on to your next image as you go through. So I want this next one too, so I'm going to pick it, and it's a, probably a 2 also. This one here is a 2 and a pick, and I'm on the last image, and I don't want that, so that's just going to be a straight reject. So from here, I'm simply going to go back to the loop and I can see all my images and I can see that I have a number that are rejected. So now I want to make sure I fill out those rejected ones. So I can simply come up here, click onto one of these uh, objects up here, attributes is what we're after. And if I simply click flag, which is picked, then when it's not flagged, they're all there. When I flag it, they're the only images that I can see and I'm going to work on. So now I've completed that activity, I'm now going to move into the develop module. So when I move in here, I can see the images down the bottom in the film strip are the only images that are flagged and that's all I'm working on. So I'm not dealing with the stuff that I've rejected. Now the first thing I want to do is go and set the color balance for these images. If I come over here and simply click on the image with the color passport in, I know I'm after a neutral gray. I'm simply going to slip straight across here to the basic module, grab my dropper here, come across, find a gray that I'm happy with and simply click on it 
and straight away you notice that the colors changed so click there no I'm happy with this one and from here what I need to do is go and return that come through select all those images back to there from there to control or command depending on whether you're using a PC or a Mac to select the other two from here I'm going to hit sync and then what from here I'm going to do is simply come up and make sure I have the treatment and white balance selected simply hit synchronize and that will apply it to all those images so you sort of wonder did we really change anything here well let's have a look we bring this one up uh, we bring it up as the before and after and you can definitely see there's warmer colors in the one after so we've fixed up the white balance in the image let's have a look at another one same deal you know there is still a very slight adjustment so these images weren't badly white balanced from the start but now we've gone through we've got them all done so we can then go back to the start and let's start working on these images and see where we're going so first thing is crop I don't need to crop this I'm happy with that it's sort of an artistic image I've got um, I then have to look at any uh, flaws or anything I want to do, spots I want to remove. I'm happy with all that. From here, simply drop the palette, the basic palette down, and it's working down through the tool. So you're going across and down. There's no adjustment stuff I need to do. Um, and from here, I'm simply going to come through, maybe change the exposure slightly, uh, bring a bit of contrast in, highlights, shadows, put a little bit of those. Ooh. A little bit of the shadows out, fix up the white a bit, make it a bit whiter, pull those blacks in, add a bit of clarity, a bit of vibrance in there, although it's only still a black and white, there's still colour in there, and then come down and have a quick look at it. So do the comparison, there you go, there's a big change already. Next, move on to the next image. Straight away, we're going to get into it. Oh, this one's a bit different. Rightio, this one here has got this through there. Well, I don't want to crop it, I'm happy with that. There's no real spot healing I need to do. But I'm going to use this gradient tool. I'm going to slip up the top here, and I'm going to drag the gradient tool through because it's going to change things for me. Pull them through, pull it through, pull it through, let it go. Okay, we've had a slight adjustment made there. Let's go and have a look and see what we can do in the basics when we pull a bit of that there. We're going to pull a few of the shadows out as well wow those shadows we're going to pull a bit of the white out start pulling a few of the blacks back in make sure we turn that gradient tool off a um, bit of clarity a bit more vibrance uh, it's not it's fair it's okay we can have a look but that's okay it's better than it was we can move on right I, I could spend more time on it but at this stage, I'm just happy to leave it as it is because it's only a basic workflow that I'm doing at the moment. So back here, work on the next image. Same deal. This one doesn't really need that much. Uh, yeah, there's, a, there's something there. If I wanted to crop that out, I could, but I'm fairly happy. Uh, adjust it slightly, exposure. Gonna pull those whites there. To, and you'll tend to find when you're working in images, there'll be certain tools which you'll use a lot more for those particular images. A bit more clarity in there, a bit more vibrance. Have a quick look at the comparison. Yep, there's already a difference. So very quickly you can go through, make changes, fix up your images, do what you need to do. I know straight away where I need to be going with a lot of this. Put a little bit of this into there. A bit of clarity, vibrance, moving on. So it's up to you whether you want to use these other tools down here. In particular times, you will need those tools. But at this stage, I'm just going through, I'm just getting the images to a workable standard that if I want to come back and do more or I want to export them just to show someone, you know, they look half decent. The secret to photography is not showing your bad work. It's showing all your good stuff. You know, making sure that people see the work that you do is only as good images. So you get rid of all your bad stuff. Um, and you keep moving on. So I'm just going to quickly go through uh, and we would just continue to work through all these images exactly like that and adjusting. So it's up to you how much work you want to do but as you can see I'm already up to six images already and it hasn't take, taken me about two three minutes to do those and that's just a quick enhancement that I've made to those images. 
So once you go through and you complete that workflow, it's now exporting them. You can either go to your print module because you're going to print them out on your home computer or go back to your library if you're going to export them. So we might export these. So for say example, this skull one here, we want to put it on our Flickr site or our, our Facebook site. It would simply be just clicking on one of these um, two tabs here and we would automatically, be, this image would automatically go to Facebook and be loaded in there at those specific specifications you have set. But I'm going to export it. So come down to the export because I want to send the file to someone. I'm going to send it to the camera club because I want this one to go in a competition. I know those settings are already made because this is a preset. I simply press export and it's a unique name, bang, and it's on its way. So it is that simple and that quick. You to go import your images, at least go through and uh, flag them and reject what you don't want, do some basic enhancement, and then down the track, if you do want to go and spend more time and do more things fixing them up, you can. But at least you've created a basic workflow that's allowing you to deal with your photographs and stay on top of them, as well as keeping them in a database system.